So my goal today is to really kind of introduce to you what Civil Labeler is. Again, why we created it. Why did we go build this other thing? We have some tools that exist already. Place label, place text, those types of things. So we'll cover what it does, why it's different, why you want to be thinking about it. A little bit on how you kind of set it up. And then I'm going to turn it over and Chuck uh, Lawson's going to join me toward the end. And he's going to talk a little bit about how to incorporate what we delivered in the product into your own workspaces so that you can quickly and easily incorporate that information and use it if you would like. So let's get started. All right, so to start out with, why did we create Civil Labeler? What's different about it versus other labeling tools? And the main thing is the top bullet that I've got on here. It has this ability to target multiple things. Those multiple things could be something as simple as two pieces of intersecting geometry. And I want to read the stations or the names off of both of those pieces of geometry. Fundamentally, that is really what Civil Labeler is about. There is no other piece of labeling or text placement, text favorite, text style kind of technology that exists in MicroStation or Open Roads that allows you to pull information from two or more things at the same time and display. And that's what Civil Labeler does. Now, in addition to that, we've also built in some tailored methods to it. We'll see some of those today that really kind of help in a civil environment, the workflows, the kind of labels that we create. We've extended it so that you can customize your prompting. So as users are having to select things to build the label, go select geometries or terrains or points or whatever it is that you're labeling, you can customize the prompting you're putting in there. And lastly, we really were trying to focus on making sure that you could easily select and change things that you might want to change frequently. Here we're looking back at some of the best capabilities that we had in MX and Geopack and Inroads and some of the labeling tools in there and what people really liked about those. That ability to quickly and easily display a leader, not display a leader, put a box around it or a capsule or a circle around it. So those kind of selectable leaders and frames. Now let's jump right in and talk about using Civil Labeler. You'll find the Civil Labeler tool on the Drawing Production ribbon, kind of right in the middle. When you click on the tool, it's going to open up the dialog here, and it's going to open into what we call a placement mode. This dialog has two modes, placement and the management mode. We've designed it this way to make it as productive as possible. So once you get your labels set up, you pop into placement mode. We minimize some of the options that are shown on the dialog so it's not too cluttered. You can focus on just those things that are important for placing labels in a production mode. And we've hidden some of those other options that are more setup related. So let's take a look at using them. So here we're in the Open Roads Designer software. We've got the Civil Labeler tool open. You can organize your labels into folders however you want. These are not predefined. This is just what we deliver with the software. You can organize and name your labels however you want. I'm going to use one here for intersecting geometry stations. You see a few options. We'll look at these in a minute, but I just want to go place a label. So I'm going to pick place. Down here on my prompt area, you can see my custom prompting. Identify first geometry, identify second selecting geometry, and I can place that note. Very simple note or label in this case. It's just got the two stations. We'll look at some other options as they get more powerful. But you can also quickly adjust things in here. So notice in the way that it's currently working, as I move left to right, that leader line is automatically jumping from the left to the right. I could also put it in a top or a bottom mode, or I could put it in an auto mode where it'll go all the way around. So depending where I'm at, it'll tie to the closest top, bottom, left, or right. I could specify a specific side if I knew it. I always want it on the left. So a lot of flexibility with that. You can also, a lot of flexibility in placing a frame around it. You don't have to go create cells and define things and all those. You just pick it from here. Do I want a rectangle around it? Do I want a capsule around it? Whatever kind of frame you want. You can put divider lines within those frames, or you can skip those divider lines. Quickly change up the way you're placing the labels. That was the goal behind it. The labels are all related. 
or associated back to those elements. So if I move this label, notice that it held its leaders, it held it pointed to that location. I could even open up that label for editing. I could add other text into it. In this case, I'm just going to label the alignments. And before you ask, yes, the label could have pulled those automatically. This is just for demonstration purposes. But you could put whatever other manual text you want to put in there. Relocate that label still behaves correct, even as a combination of computed labels and text labels. If the geometry changes, notice that the label repositioned itself, the leader line repositioned itself, the text in the label updated, and my custom text in the label stayed. So I'm trying to give you kind of the best of all worlds here and within the labels. Now, I mentioned that there is this manager mode. So let's understand a little bit about what that's about. To enable the manager mode, all you have to do is click this icon in the lower left portion of the dialog. It changes a little bit, and what it adds is a few things. Some buttons to open and save the libraries where the labels are defined, and there's some icons on there or buttons on there to create new labels, delete labels. Depending on the label type, there are a few more advanced options that we hide during placement mode because you generally are not going to get to those. Uh, so those will become available during the advancement mode. You may see those. And then the most visible thing and probably the biggest thing is that there's two tabs available now, not just the placement tab, but there's also a label tab. And if we click on that, it'll take us to the area that's really kind of the heart of defining this label. And that all starts with a text favorite. Now, text favorites are not new. They're not unique to the civil labeler have them out there already, using them in your other labels. You may be using them with just pure microstation labels. They're the exact same text favorites that you could have had out there before. So anything you can define in a text favorite, you can use here. But what does labeler do different? Well, it's all about how we interpret and use and target the things in that text favorite. This is the label for that two pieces of intersecting geometry station. So this text favorite has two items in it. Now the labeler reads those and says, okay, I see two things there and I'm going to name them target one and target two. It just sequentially names them. If it found five, it would name them target one through five. When we look at the area just below that visual for the text favorite, we can see a little information about what it is. So we can see that target one that text favorite actually has a text field in there and it is targeting some plan stationing. That plan annotation dot point station is basically saying, hey, I'm going to go look at some stationing in a plan view. And target two is doing the same thing. The power of the civil labeler comes into play in this next column. And this is where we can tell it what to do with each of those targets. Do we want the user when they're placing the label to go select some sort of an element that is going to then be used to interpret the value for that target. In this case, both of these, we have selection set, or the prompt type set to select. So we are going to be prompted to select both of those. And then in the last column, we can define that custom prompting that we want to put in front of the user as they're selecting those text fields. This is a slightly more advanced label. Um, this label, notice in the text favorite there, has four targets. It's labeling both the station and the name of the geometry. It's also got some static text in there. Those parentheses that are in white, those aren't some sort of special programming. That's just text that we put in the text label because we wanted the name to appear inside parentheses. But if you look at the bottom part of the screen where the targets are at, notice that the first two targets are both red. And the first one, target one, is set to select. So we're going to go pick that piece of geometry. The second target where we're going to get the name from that piece of geometry, we don't want to have to go pick that again. That would get difficult or just non-productive to have to go do that. So what we're telling it is that that is going to be the same target as target one. And the same down below, target three, we're going to go select, and target four is just going to match or use the same thing that we selected for target three. 
Another example, just taking it a little bit further, in this case, we're labeling the station, uh, an elevation, and the name from each of the two pieces of geometry. So we're selecting at once for target one, and then targets two and three are both pointed back to target one. And the same for target four we select, targets five and six pointed back to it. And one last example that I'll show you here, then we'll move on. This is just showing some additional power. You know, this is a little bit more complicated label. All the white text is just man static text that we've typed into the favorite. Anything that shows target on it is something that's a text field that we're interpreting. In this case, we're going to label a point, but we're also going to select a piece of geometry and we're going to select a terrain or a surface mesh. So the ultimate label is going to label the name and coordinates and elevation of the point. The station and offset from a geometry, as well as the elevation projected back to that piece of geometry, and read the elevation off the ground at that location. One text favorite, one label, it's picking up 11 different fields, it's selecting three different elements, a point, a line, an alignment, geometry, and a surface or terrain line. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.